Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my class. Um, my name is Sven, I'm from Cologne, Germany. I'm uh, the proud head coach of Game Theory Jiu-Jitsu and grappling coach of KJMMA in Cologne. Um, by the way, whenever you come through Cologne, feel free, feel free to text me, find me, drop in for training. Um, today we're going to do a class on claw rights and I kind of slept on getting my classes or the, the order of my classes switched. I guess it would have been cooler after my control class, but it's not mandatory. So um, we're going to work on claw right today. Um, before we get to what specifically is the claw right, what is a right in general? Um, there's great examples of people that control by using rides. Um, the most prominent ones in MMA are probably um, Khabib and Ben Askren ben, back when he was fighting. Um, what I understand on the right is a, is a means to control someone, but not just pin them down, but uh, rather let them move, but let them move to your terms. So you, the guy's moving and you're staying in control and regularly staying on top and riding their movement. And um, you never lose control of your opponent. So it's a dynamic way of controlling someone um, as opposed to just pinning someone down and kind of um, negating all movement. Um, it's very hard to negate movement. It's easier and in some ways I think technically more sound to dictate movement. So um, that's basically something we're going to work on today. Um, I mean, it's here. And we start, we start from, um, I'm, I'm glad Preet isn't in the room. We start from, a, yes. a, he is in the room? Preet is there. Good Preet is in the room, so you're going to hear a lot of no's in the beginning. When we start with your, your average turtle, not that awesome, indestructible Preet turtle, but just your average turtle. Um, what I want to come to is a grip that goes in the direction of a seatbelt, but instead of getting that arm from the shoulder on deep, I want to come deep from the armpit and reach the far shoulder. This thing is the claw right, this grip. Um, I won't just be able to get here. Kieran is too good at grip fighting, he will close that gap, so what I will start with usually is off balancing him. There's two ways of doing that. Um, I grab the hip and either especially if he's um, sloppy with his turtle or if we just enter into the position, um, I will just use my close knee next to his, pull him, get out of his way. If he doesn't do anything, he falls over. But as he just doesn't want to give me side control, he'll probably base out as soon as I do that. And on the way back, I will enter my claw right and drop, that's important, I drop my shoulder all the way underneath this armpit. We're gonna come to a lot of why we do things after we just did it. So I'm gonna hide my shoulder all the way under his armpit, my ear finds his shoulder blade, and the grip goes as deep as possible. As with so many grips, don't grip with your fingers, try and grip with your, grab with your wrist. So my wrist is hooking into the shoulder there, the other hand just stays on the hip. Close in your elbow and let your knee and your elbow meet. My knee is higher than Kieran's hip. Uh, we're gonna do that first. If I keep that knee low, naively, it's easy for Kieran to just tripod, get a sip up, and run towards me. Nope, the other way around. Over my hip, get your, get your ass up, and just run that way. Over my hip, over my hip, over my hip. Sorry, <laughs> So, if he's naive here, I'll, I could just run him over and make him look stupid. <laughs> it's not, not cool if you, if you did all that dark in here, and then he just come up, comes up and runs over, so get your knee up, then you can just, balance that up. So that's off balance number one. Use your close knee, pull them, enter. If he has a better base and you need some more momentum, um, do what it's best described as a flying back step. So I'll use that knee on his knee and my body weight to just pull him off his base. Same thing, he bases, comes back, and when he comes back to turtle, I'm already in. Knee high, elbow in. Just do that for a couple of minutes, switching your own terms. Um, off balance, shoot your arm in, hide your shoulder, control the hip with elbow and knee. That's it for now. Go, go. <laughs> um, back to Charlie again. After we kind of solve the grips, um, again, that's the, the detail most people um, forget. It's 
what happens every time. Um, I want to make sure that when I enter my, le my, my arm here, that like the camera doesn't see my shoulder. I go here, all the way in. You basically can't go too deep on this. Keep control of the hip, keep your knee up with this. Um, also, my weight goes towards the shoulders. I lean my weight into the shoulder I have a lot of control over. So I'm kind of, um, I'm using this to pull him in and I push into the shoulders. Um, there's two things I want you to try now. The, the first thing is, if he gets up, if he, if he puts his knees up, yeah, so basically just tripod. Yeah. If he tripods, come up with him. And um, the, the cool thing about the claw riders is it's basically a modified double undergrip, so it's easy to get on top of your partner even if he stands up. But as always, before you just randomly jump on someone, try to ride him, ask for consent. If you're ready, your base is okay, and you feel you can catch me, now enter. As always, when his head is lower than his hips, use one deep hook and a shallow one. This is deep, this is shallow, I have control, and he's, he's gonna have a hard time shaking me off. I can stay here for a while. It's cool to watch too. So, this is one thing you can do, but again, don't just jump on people as soon as they ask himself. Find some form of communication, him nodding or saying go, so you're sure you're not jumping on someone who's still wobbly, okay? The second thing, from here, probably, um, especially with people that don't do MMA or wrestle a lot, they, or have never been to a pre-seminar, they usually do not stand up when their back is threatened. So they go the regular way of bringing their, uh, their back to the mat and kind of scraping you off. That would usually start, yeah, with that shoulder. As soon as that shoulder hits the mat and I sleep on it, he can, uh, Kieran can easily scrape me off and turn towards me. Do it once, hit. Yeah, it's easy, easy to lose him. When, there's the, when the mat is on his back, there's no space in between for me. So what I want to do is keep that shoulder off the mat. So as soon as I see this shoulder dropping and him committing to falling down, I'll be faster than him and the claw right will make sure that the, the shoulder has minimal contact with the mat. So you do the same thing as before. That's it, I'm with you. I can ideally enter my my control, and this, this shoulder has very little time on the floor, so usually he wants his shoulder, then his back, and then his hip to, to touch the mat, and I will not allow him that. So first, only focus on this shoulder. As soon as it drops and I see him go, I will be faster, and use this to actively pull him off the mat. If you end in a seated position, that's pretty good. You might, if you're, if you're Bethesda, you might end up here, like half seated. It's not too bad either. Just go up, take the back. For now, we build on this bit by bit. But make sure that the shoulder has as little time on the mat, ideally none as possible, by picking it off the mat. Okay, let's go. When jumping on your partner, make sure he's ready for it. I only tell you like half of the story. Um, it's not only the shoulder that I need to, uh, ideally I want to beat to the mat, it's also the hip. So like the, the far corners of his, of his upper body, if any of those touches the mat for too long, that's probably his, his route to escape. So he could, instead of putting the shoulder to the mat, Pretty similarly, put, bring the hip to the mat first, I collapse here, and it's the same thing. I'm, I gotta chase it, um, and I'm, right now I'm probably losing, or I might be losing. So, um, that's the reason, or one of the reasons, other than looking stupid when he runs us over, why he put this knee up here. Um, also, I didn't mention that, but most people did it correctly, the, the far side foot, don't leave it out here, then the angle is all weird, bring, it, bring your feet together, basically. Put your feet together here, Align your your uh, calf with him, and it's easier to stay on. The second thing I do is my knee is going to be his hip to the mat. Ideally, this grip will help me. Similarly to that grip, peeling the shoulder off the mat, this grip makes sure that the hip doesn't have too much contact with the mat. So um, we try to do it slow enough for you to see. When Kieran tries to bring this hip to the mat, my grip will slow it down, and my knee will beat it to the mat. So this hip never touched the mat. 
my knee was first, and he just sat into basically into back control. Um, some people kind of do both at the same time, and they just spin. So hip and um, shoulder hit the at the same time. But again, I'm, I have to beat them to the mat, and I have to peel them off the mat as soon as they touch it. So it doesn't really matter if you go shoulder first, hip first, or kind of both. No matter where it rolls, as long as I make sure that I peel them off the mat and I beat them to the mat, all is good. So um, roll either over your shoulder, your hip, or both. Yeah. There I go. And I still have control over him, and it's hard for him to turn into me because I'm behind that. Um, now to, why do I hide my shoulder this deep? One thing is to grip this way, um, way tighter if I attach myself closer. The other thing is that oftentimes we roll through to the other side because there's a lot of momentum in it. Um, I'm going to purposely put my shoulder too high, my shoulder still sticking out. If we do the same thing again, he rolls, I roll with him, we end up on the other side. Now this shoulder touches the mat. And sooner or later, he's going to scoot up in that direction, I'm going to lose him. So, I'm kind of precautionarily making sure that there's real estate in between the shoulder and the mat, even if we end up on the, on the other side. I'm putting like braking blocks, which the things you put on a truck wheels, I'm putting those in, in place beforehand and making sure we end up on those. So, shoulders in deep, we roll and we get all the way through to the other, uh, to the other side. Even if you get here, the shoulder is still not touching the mat. I'm kind of underneath him. And it's easy now that the momentum is stopped to go in and reattach and get the back. Okay? So, two things again. Try beating the hip to the mat with your knee. Make sure he kind of sits on your knee, ideally. Um, the grip will help you. You will keep his, his hip or slow his hip down a bit for your knee to fit in there. And if you roll through to the other side, that's a good test if you did the, the, the initial grip correctly. If you end up on the other side and his shoulder touches the mat, do it better the next time. If your shoulder touches the mat, well done. Okay? Cool. Go. So, um, there's two situations or two positions I like to do from a lot. The turtle is kind of good to get a grasp of the, of the initial mechanic behind it. Um, but it's, at least for me, it's not the most, the most common place to use it. Um, I do it mostly from another ride, from a knee ride, and um, from a side control on knee on belly when my, my partner or my, my opponent is exposing their back on their own. Um, so, <clears throat> we're stuck with the knee ride. Um, not, not the technique, but just imagine the scenario. It's, let's say it's a guard pass scenario, and I, uh, instead of go to side control, I just drive his knees to the, to the mat and bring my shin over the knees. This is a knee ride. This is another right position. We're going to do something on that on my class on Thursday. Um, it's one of those great positions in Jiu Jitsu that doesn't give you any points, but that's enormously controlling. Um, sucks for the bottom guy, and it's also pretty great for MMA, I think. Because um, you have just way more, way more real estate, uh, real estate, way more space in between you to just punch someone in the mouth repeatedly. Um, I put my weight on the knees. I want my sh my shin to drive through all the the, the cartilage in the knee. Um, and I'm basically going to use the same thing from here. Usually, I will be digging for underhooks here to flatten them out to create that that spiral pressure and just pass them. But especially with people who know that and they, they like counter frame, um, it's relatively easy with the multiple threats I have here of headlocks, the underhook, um, Darces and Co. to bring that elbow across my center line, my head behind it, and shoot in for the same claw right position. Um, that might be even deeper than the one before because it's not posting on this arm, and I might almost get elbow deep on this. Now I'm counting for the same grip on this side. Um, ideally, I want the hip. I can do it without, but it's harder. So I'm driving my weight forward and going head over head. That makes his hip pretty light. He still can't escape because there's weight both on his knees 
and on his shoulder. So there's no, no way really for his hip to go. Um, and I'm just gonna repeatedly buckle, buckle him up till I get my fingers around his hip bone. So this is not enough. I would get, not get underneath the hip bone if he not, doesn't elevate his hip. But if I just keep doing that till you can't see my hand anymore, that's good. Um, he's already broken down to the mat, so I need something to generate momentum. If I wanted to go for the, for the back take from here, um, I would look stupid. This shoulder's already on the, mat, on the mat. He would just turn with me and I, I lose everything. This, this won't work. He will just keep scooting to the mat and escape. So I'll just keep driving my weight over his head and tripod over him. See how this elevates his hip? That's basically all I want. There's the space we were fighting for just a second ago. I will enter my knee in there, take the shoulder off the mat, and then in the basically same position as before. Sometimes, um, especially if he reacts to it, we might end up a bit more perpendicular. He's already starting to turn into me. If that happens, I make sure that my limbs on, this, on his backside, my right arm, and or my right leg, help me scoop. So in a seated position, I will use my arm just to um, switch the angle. If we end up all the way over here, my arm is not any use, but this leg, and now it's not turning into me anymore. So I, I uh, kind of have to readjust um, our alignment. So just start here. This would be the leg drag. I guess everyone knows leg drag. All you do is bring your knee over his, and drive down here. Have a solid base, as you would in like a neon, neon belly or a neon stomach. From here, uh, he doesn't give me the underhook. I push this pass and slide through. Like you, similar to uh, what you would do when you were looking for an, uh, a head and arm choke. Get the grip. Dig till you really have control of the hip bone and drive your way forward. This elevates the hip, especially together with the knee, uh, with, the, with the grip here. Now, bring your knee in, pull him over, and insert hooks. Same thing, if you end up on the other side, make sure you end up on your shoulder, not on his. Okay, so we're using the tripod and the grip to redirect him and use the back exposure we created with the knee run. Good? Go! Um, I see a, a couple of you having problems with controlling the head. Um, I need to get his hips off the ground. So I'm in my knee ride. So I have this grip. Um, be before I do anything, just to get the grip, this usually is enough. But it's not enough to bring my knee in there. Um, as soon as I try basically to put my forehead on the mat behind his head, without the grip even, this puts up his hip. This is what I want. I can use it to get the grip, but usually then my arm is pretty extended, so I kind of like to be here, be, be more compact, um, not allow him to move that much. Get the hand in first, get the elbow close, and then drive. See how high his hip is? It's pretty easy now to put my knee in, but just don't just kneel down. I don't want my knee cap on the mat. I want the, the outside of my knee on the mat and inside towards the hip. So I'm turning, I'm coming from high up, dropping in and bringing the inside of my knee to his hip, pulling him over. So my kneecap is pointing that way and not into the mat. Um, if you just put your knee on the mat at random, you end up with this. I'm not anywhere behind him and I just lay down next to him. And again, I look stupid, and we want to avoid that at all costs. So, come here, bring up, drive, and now, oh, my knee comes in first. He's super high up on my hip, and it's relatively easy to get my hooks in now. That's at least the next part, but I'm fully behind him, and I have my knees and my elbows both in place. So, especially those of you who had problems with either getting the initial grip, or, somehow fiddling your knee in, in there, use your weight over his head, try and tripod on your, on your forehead, drive him forwards, and make sure that your, 
your knee is kind of scraping over the mat. It's basically like a, like a, um, the reverse of a technical stand up. Not doing this, but this. Sit up. It's a resting move again, just to take it back. Resting Jiu Jitsu are the same. <laughs> Go! Um, any major troubles until this point? Anything that like, doesn't work at all? This, um, I don't expect you to all like hit the hit the ideal back take and end up with perfect alignment. Um, the objective is to get my elbows and knees on each side of them, and that that fine tuning with the angles that that's for like the next week to practice if you if you like to practice that. Um, and you kind of have to watch the alignment. Your partner's getting wise to it. They turn with it. Um, it's just a, a very quick and very opportunistic opportunity to um, get a pretty surprising, surprising back take. It's not a usual usual place to go for a back take. So any major problem to you, bro? Yeah. So if you shoot your knee through, you end up behind. That's all good. Then I drop a strap like this one. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
the more he struggles to get out of, it, out of this, the more back exposure he might create um, towards me. Yeah, try to get my knee out, yeah, whatever. This, this is pretty perfect. This is just a standard scenario that, that might occur. From here, I'm basically gonna do the same thing. Um, I try and get my hand on the inside and drop in on this. This happens after, after guard passing, when someone's uh, really struggling to escape your side control, um, and they overcommit to this. You get here. Same thing, only my knee is not over, over his knees, I'm not starting from knee right, but I start here. I still try and get my knee up over his hip. I don't want it down here, that kind of compromises my base, and if he keeps coming up, we basically do the same thing we did before. He can run over my hip, run towards me. Yeah, I'm making it look stupid again. So, we might be coming from here, or from the, neon, from the neon belly, like from top or bottom, so I'm still making sure this knee beats his hip. There's constant threat of me driving into mount, um, that's also attached to that, but I'll make sure that he get, doesn't get back to the mat by pulling him in, and again, digging my hand in there. Same thing, driving, I kind of drive the side of my head to the mat now, to make the hip light, and now the, the leg movement is a bit more tricky. I kind of flick my leg over all the way. My knee drives in as close a line, closest, uh, closest orbit possible, and my foot just kind of flicks around it. So I'm driving, putting him down, ending up on the other side. I have a hook already. I can insert the last one. So. There we go. We start from the on belly. He gets crazy, he starts turning into me. Whoop. Get here. If that's too much for you, just start in the side control. Let your partner turn in like crazy. There it is. Knee up. Get the hip. Drive and flick your leg around. In there. Bring him up. Foot comes on this. Um, for those of you, because we only have like five minutes left, um, if you feel that you, you're, kind of, you're either familiar with it already or you, um, you have a good feeling for it, you can go for the slightly riskier but even faster version that pretty quickly leads into the finishes too. Same scenario, but that's what, that's what kind of created an awkward break in the technique when I was demonstrating it the first time. Usually this arm doesn't end up here, it's not stupid. So it kind of ends up on the inside and there. Um, he's still turning into me and I get the, the arm underneath here. Um, it's not bad to do from here either, I have a bit less control over the shoulder. I still bring my, my ear in behind the shoulder and I do the claw right without control underneath the armpit. Still getting this and I'm still doing the same thing with driving my weight and putting him up here. Um, it's a bit more risk because without a shorty you can't control the rotation that well. But it's a pretty high reward because my arm is already where I need it for remaking. So the better you get at um, elevating the hip and flicking through, the better the reward is of doing it without the arm and just going right into the finish. Okay? Good. So depending on how, how good you feel with it, either um, just go through the motions again troubleshoot what was what didn't work that well or start from the knee on belly position it, it's a new setup and the, the leg movement is a bit more complex if all is fine and well do it without the control of the arm just to control in the neck feels kind of weird in the beginning um, but if you if you have a good feeling of it it's pretty rewarding to do okay go Sadly, we have to come to an end. Um, before we take the picture, um, yeah, some, some quick final words to this. Um, if you start maybe in those scenarios working with that particular grip with that chloride, you will find a hell of a lot of um, of points in just regular sparring where you might be able to apply it. Um, as with everything, don't see it. Don't only see the back tag. There's a lot of depending on which of the positions you do, there's a lot of um, submissions that are right next to it, like headlocks, 
um, head and arm chokes. There's, um, especially from the knee right position, the more he tries to avoid his lips, uh, his lips, his hips uh, elevating, the easier it might be to just take him out. Um, especially if he makes his hips heavy, the head becomes light, so you have a good chance of grabbing a headlock there. Just for for uh, for a quick reminder, where it gets you to the knee right. Um, the more Kieran tries to keep his hips heavy, he has to put his head up. He can't like have the have the head on the mat, me driving in and, and keep the hips down. That doesn't work really. So I'm trying to put his head up. He's working against it. But that's just exposing his head, so you might be able to find darses or headlocks from him. Um, also, if he tries to get his shoulder back out to the mat, okay, I'm mounting. I'm okay with that. Still have head and arm. I still had an arm choke here. Um, so it's it's kind of a gap filler in between movement. Um, it's pretty opportunistic, but it's also as soon as you have it, you're you can be very determined with it. Um, the one thing, as with a couple of things in jiu-jitsu, um, a couple of things especially in wrestling, but again they're the same, bringing the knee in requires some commitment. Do a proper tripod, give yourself as, as much leeway as possible to get the knee in, and then commit to that knee. The, the key thing that goes wrong is people not committing to rolling with the other guy, to beating them to the mat, and committing to bringing that knee in. That's like the, the key commitment thing is, you have to get the knee in. It, there's very little that can go wrong from that. Um, just another quick thing, that's a, a fix for, especially for people in the beginning. I saw people with a more risky variety of the, of the thing going right to the rear naked choke. There's no waving in a rear naked choke. You never wave anyone with a rear naked choke. Waves, circular motions are easy to intercept. You always want to stick in rear naked chokes. Just a quick thing, because I, I saw that on a couple of places when you went into the finish. Never wave anyone. You can wave after you want. <laughs> you have to grip and you stick the other hand to it. Just a quick fix. Um, find me throughout the camp whenever I'm here for roles, for questions on that. Um, my next class on Thursday. We're going to do dynamic controls and controlling dynamics. That's a bit more on the, on the rides and on tripods especially. Um, and why Side control kind of sucks and pre root jujitsu for everyone. And um, we're gonna take a quick, yeah, please do a class over there so I can shit talk him all day. Uh, here's a class over in the other room. No. I'm here. <laughs> Fuck. Say <laughs> <laughs> hi, you're rather on his side, I don't mind shit. Um, let's take a picture. Thank you very much for coming.